Welcome back, friends and scoundrels, to Roll the Live page. Uh, this is the Tinker Shop where I do some crafting things. So today we're going to go over a quick, nice tabletop ready paint job for these runes that you're seeing pictures of. So I'm going to start off nice, simple black uh, base coat. And because we didn't do our typical opening for this, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit here. These are an item that we got in the January Dungeon Crate, the Epic Encounters. And they come from Nord Games, and they're a sample piece sent in um, from their Kickstarter. They have a lot more of this stuff that um, might buy when it comes out because I didn't know about the Kickstarter and wasn't able to get in on it when I had the chance. <clears throat> But these are made of plaster. It's called Merlin's Magic Plaster. And seems to hold up pretty well since January. Haven't used them a whole lot, but I have dropped them a couple times just moving them around. And they haven't chipped or broken or anything, so that's a good thing. So now we're moving on to um, the Pewter Gray Overbrush. Uh, it's kind of like a dry brush, but quite a bit more paint left on just trying to get the actual stones not necessarily trying to get into the crevices and cracks and spaces that are left another pretty simple step here just like I said go over your go over your stones don't necessarily worry about trying to get in your cracks and crannies if you do we'll take care of that here in a, in a later step here in a couple moments and now we're moving on to the dry brushing step. I'm using Gray Sky here, but if you want to stick with the Apple Barrel brand, the color that I have for that is Granite Gray. And my dry brushing, I generally try to keep in, well, all my highlights in general, I generally try to keep from a top-down aspect, just so that way everything kind of matches while it's sitting on the table. I know a lot of people like to get really elaborate and have all kinds of different lighting sources but for me and having my own miniatures that I throw down I want everything to have kind of the same look but that's neither here nor there dry brushing is pretty pretty easy step except for when you've got spaces where you got to fight to work in but usually doesn't take too terribly long as you can kind of see, even in the with the boots of speed on. And now we're moving on to a wash. This is a homemade wash. Um, I know there's some water, a little bit of dish soap, black, brown. I think I might have put some kind of green in there. I don't necessarily remember. I think I made it this when I did this project, maybe maybe before that. I don't know. It's been a while. But just like your base coat, you just kind of go over, but you don't necessarily have to worry about trying to cover everything. So get it on there. The wash will run wherever it needs to. And once you're done, just let it sit and dry. Usually it takes a little bit longer than the paint just because it's water. <laughs> and now the final, well... Next final step, we are going to add some flocking because what good ruins don't have moss growing on them. So you see, I used some super glue on mine for two reasons partially because it dries quicker, and the other part is because it causes the flock to harden, which I kind of like. So just Add some super glue into some spaces. I think on these I went for corner areas or places, you know, places where you normally see moss growing and the deeper cracks. So that way I didn't have as much flowing over onto the bricks themselves and kind of overtaking that space. And I didn't cover this step, but I do give these kind of a protective coating. Um, I used 
Rustoleum clear mat finish. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. And gave it a coat. Alright, so that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn on the notifications. Check out our Facebook page and minds.com. All of that's down in the junk below. And until next time, lift a roll.